What are some things that I consider when trying to decide whether to use this style of hinge or my homemade gate hinge? Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be hanging a couple of gates on some H braces that we built in a previous video. We will put a link to those videos in the description of this video so you can go catch up in case you're interested. Before I hung the gates, I went ahead and went through here and cut off all the single posts to the right height, capped them, and then put the fence clips on I got to use my new fire rig. I was so excited. I mean, I was just tickled pink to use this old fire rig that I built. So daggum handy. A single post can either be used down in a valley to keep the wire down in a valley, because if you just have T posts and they're not deep enough, or even if they are in the ground soft and you go to stretch that wire, it'll actually pull the T post out of the ground. So it's better to have a single post with concrete at the bottom with clips to hold your wire down in that valley. It can also be used for the very opposite to set on top of a hill to keep your wires off the ground and in line with the rest of the fence. For those of you who may not know me, my name's Austin Ross. I've been a welder for a few years now. Here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders. If those are videos that you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. Also, I'm excited to announce that we are opening up the Pipe Fence Course enrollment on March 17th, 2022. If you're new here and you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. My wife and I created an online Pipe Fence Course. What we've done is essentially taken all my years of experience and put it all into a nice little package so you can shorten your learning curve when it comes to building pipe fence, whether that's for a business or just for yourself around the farm or for a new property you just bought and you're into DIY stuff, that's what this course is for. We want to save you time, years of experience essentially. If you're interested in such a thing, you can find the course at arosswelding.school. Since it's not quite open for enrollment, in the meantime, you can either punch in your email and get a notification via email whenever the pipe fence course does open for enrollment. But there's also all kinds of information about the pipe fence course. You can read about it, so you can be thinking about it. And I believe there's even an example course that you can check out by punching in your email also. Beautiful day to be doing work. We got a simple little project here. We're going to be using this same gate. We just gotta cut it off of the wooden post and then weld it onto the new metal brace. All right, so the first thing that I do whenever I'm re-hanging a gate is I put my gate jacks up underneath my gate. That way, whenever I cut my hinges, the gate doesn't fall over. It just sets nicely on my gate jacks. If you're interested in building your own set of gate jacks, you can find some prints of the gate jacks on my website, arosswelding.com forward slash shop under digital prints. Handy, handy tools. I mean, handy. Now that uh, our gate is cut off, I'm going to go ahead and make some new hinges. I'm going to make a couple of uh, what I call flags. Cut a two inch sliver out of this quarter inch flat, and then I'm gonna cut a two four inch pieces of uh, fold roll here. I'm gonna weld them tabs and quarter inch tabs on here and 
that's what's gonna weld on the post and I'm gonna weld this uh, pipe onto the gate. That's the plan anyway. Forgot my chop saw at the house or else I'd be using a chop saw for this. I really could uh, throw in my vise and cut it with a zip disc, but I just feel like using my torch. good time to do it because this is uh, what I call like farm work. It's like putting lipstick on a pig, you know. Plus it gives me practice. hung. I made these uphill welds here with 332, 7018. Started at the bottom, went uphill. I put a new pipe on because it had some thin pipe that was cracking out and stuff. I cut it off and I put this new thicker pipe on. Uh, 332, 7018 on the, on the hinges right here, but the pipe to the gate, I used 1 8 6011 because this stuff here is old and thin and uh, most likely, me personally, I would have blown through this and it just would have given me more trouble trying to use 332-7018. And uh, so I just used uh, 6011, just ran it downhill. Uh, didn't worry about cleaning anything up. You can see there's still old weld from the pipe that was on the gate originally. This is one of them projects. Uh, I need to come up with uh, like some terms or like some uh, different standards. You know, I like to call this farm work. And I'm not saying you can't have you know your braces and gates out in the middle of a pasture nice on a farm i'm not opposed to that at all but it's it seems like at least around where i'm from uh, nine times out of ten a lot of farmers just don't worry so much about looks they just worry about functionality 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 there we go got it functionality you know over pretty so just by putting these new metal braces in and restretching this old wire this fence is going to last another 20 years. I don't know how long this fence has been in, but um, even though the skate's old, it's still got a lot of life left in her. Might have some bends in it and stuff. It was kind of cracking out here, so I went ahead and put some weld there. But yeah, I'd, I would never want to encourage anybody to settle for uh, like not as nice of work. Like I always like to strive to do good work, but there is a time and a place for not as nice of work like what we got here. So uh, you can still take, you know, pride in your work and not have to make everything look absolutely pretty so all we did over here was weld the chain hook on that we would just throw a chain around the post i guess technically wouldn't even have to have that but that, that, that is kind of nice because if you leave it on your gate you can you wouldn't this is like a safety measure you could always just throw it in here if you were just going through here and coming back um, but anyway use 332 7018 weld that chain hook on there threw a chain around it and uh yeah, this gate's done. We'll uh, head on down to the next hole. All right, 
here's the next hole. First thing I'm gonna do is make some flags. You know, these style of gates right here come with uh, little threaded hinges. They come with these guys here. A couple of things to consider when deciding whether to use these adjustable hinges that come with these gates or not is one, how often you're gonna be using the particular gate and your type of latch you have on the gate. If you're gonna be using the gate a lot and your latch needs to be accurate, you might want to consider using this adjustable hinge because it is nice to be able to adjust your gate throughout the year because your gate will move up and down throughout the year. So if you're using the gate a lot and your latch is the type of latch where, like a sliding latch where your, your pin's gotta hit a hole, then you may consider using an adjustable hinge if you're not going to be using your gate very often, like this gate here, it's out in the back of the pasture, they're not going to use it that often. And our latch is a chain, so the gate can move as much as it wants up and down, and it, it doesn't matter. We don't need to adjust our hinge. Other than that, I just like to use these, what I call flag hinges on, on gates, because I just, they're quick to make, and you don't have to cut any holes in the pipe, and... Uh, if you don't need to adjust your gate, they're just, they just look a little nicer in my opinion. They look a little stronger versus this. If I was to use this type of hinge on a pipe, I personally would run a piece of pipe through here that slid right over this and then weld the ends of the piece of pipe. That way water couldn't get down in the pipe and start rusting the pipe from the inside out. Some would argue that water's going to get up in the pipe anyway because of the the uh, water table and then there's also the argument of condensation so i don't know if that piece of pipe would be necessary i've i don't think i've ever done that on a pipe hinge or on a gate hinge but that's just where my mind goes me personally but that is what i would do and then i always put my hinges opposite of each other that way you can't lift the gate off the hinges because technically you could put both your flags looking up like that bottom one that bottom one's looking up like this and then you could put this top one up like this but then you could lift your gate up off the hinges which in some cases would be handy so again depending on where your gate's at that could actually benefit somebody in a certain situation but my tendency unless instructed otherwise or some kind of custom situation I always just put my hinges on opposite that way you can't pull the gate off the hinges so anyway first thing I'm going to do is make them flags so they can be cooling off a little bit won't have very much time because all I'm gonna do after that is get the gate in the gate jacks and get it all leveled up and looking good. And then uh, I'll hang the thing and then throw me a chain hook on this side for the latch and then we'll be good to go. Just wet down my area with my new fire rig. I'm just so tickled about this fire, this water pump, this fire uh, fire rig situation. I just love it, it's just a good little a little peace of mind. It's, it's actually surprising me how excited I am about this. I just, I just feel like it keeps me from being uh, held up, you know. Allows me to get some hours in. Camo, yeah, like.
So on this gate, I actually had to trim one of my hinges in this particular situation, this again, used gate farm project status. The gate's used and it's kind of bent up and uh, the post was a little out of level. So post being out of, I'm sorry, not level, plumb, post being out of plumb and the gate being a little bit bent, I had to adjust one of my hinges. I just trimmed a little bit off the bottom hinge. So therefore my gap was off. But the one thing I did was make sure the gate was plumb the opposite direction, like this way. But ultimately, whenever I'm hanging gates in awkward situations, every one of them is different. But I always consider which way it's gonna be open in both directions, or if it needs to open in both directions, and I make sure it works in the way that it's gonna be open the most. So in this particular situation, even though my gap on this gate is bigger up here than it is down there. That only affects whenever it's closed, but as long as I'm plumb this way, in theory, my gate should stay in the same plane as it opens up. If I, if I got it out of plumb, say I put that bottom hinge kicked that way, then whenever I opened it, it would actually swing uphill, and that could or could not be a good thing depending on how the land is out there. So. There's a lot of different things kind of to consider when hanging a gate, especially when you got a bent gate and an unplumbed post and this, that, and the other. But like I always say with gates, happy mediums and situation dependent. So here's a close up of it all finished up. This is the original width, the two inch width that I cut my hinge whenever I built my flags. And then down there I just trimmed, it looks like about half off of it. And then, down here we got another hook just like on the last one we welded on just threw a chain around it and uh yeah that's a done deal it's definitely not the prettiest thing in the world but um they can get to and from each pasture here so that was the objective thanks for watching don't forget to get on the waiting list for the pipe fence course that's going to be open for enrollment in two weeks a little under two weeks now march 17th 2022 check out our website arosswelding.com for more helpful resources and remember learn something every day